This is a Flat Earth Theater production of Fine Tuned Universe, science fiction radio play by A. Lermont. Salutations! In our last transmission, Commander Andreas took off in the jump ship to configure the Chinese satellite, but her signal was eerily lost. Add to that, no new contact with Earth, and Moira Base has dropped off the face of the moon, but we suddenly picked up this newfangled transmission. Who are they? Can they help us? Hang on to your helmets while we bring you Chapter 4 of Fine-Tuned Universe. Hello, if anyone is on this channel, we are receiving you but getting a lot of feedback. Please adjust your settings if you can. Please respond if you can hear me. This is Chief Reese at Arroway Lunar Station. Commander, are you there? Please come in. We're receiving radio transmissions from the Chinese satellite. What the hell did you do up there? Commander, Andreas, please respond. Moira Base, please come in. This is Chief Reese. It is absolutely vital that we speak to you. Spindler, damn it, respond to your radio. Over. Mal. Oh, I know, I know. You've got to take a break from that. You're going to lose your voice. Not while we're in our window with Moira. I understand. Not while Andreas is still fucking missing. There's nothing you can do about that right now. I can babysit the radio for a while if you want. Ugh. Or I can keep you company while I work on the spectrum data. You don't mind. You're still thinking about the spectrum data at a time like this? When am I not thinking about the spectrum data? All right, point taken. And there's something funny about how everything here mysteriously broke. All these independent systems. And now we start receiving these gobbledygook transmissions when we start looking into it? Oh, there's nothing proving that it's related to the radio telescope data. There's nothing proving what it is. Have you thought about what Dr. Barthome was saying about the moment the data transfer went down? To be honest, I haven't put thought into anything in a week except talking on this radio with anyone who listens, so I may be less than helpful to you right now. That's okay. Just let me explain. Just, just listen. Now, uh, we have the analyzed data that went through the algorithm right up until the timestamp when everything stopped working. We have the raws from everything after, and every time we try to analyze it, it breaks the fanny pack at the exact same time code. So what, you think the data's corroded? Or it's something that was transmitted. What if it's not a coincidence that unrelated software, which worked fine until now, that unrelated software shuts down at the same point and the problem is with the radio emissions themselves, something we haven't accounted for. There's something your team hasn't accounted for? That sounds unlikely. We're listening for things that are familiar because we don't have the creativity to imagine something truly alien. We might have the key right here and we just thought it was broken when really it's everything we've been looking for. There could be something right in front of us, but we can't see it's there. Like, like if you had a painting coated in UV paint, but never thought to turn a black light on. But where do we start? Even in a small chunk of the data. Mal? Sorry, I'm uh, not really in it right now. Yeah, I see that. I know you've got a lot on your plate, but this might explain How do you keep we... everything so hyper-focused on techno-signatures and, and algorithms and whatever when everything is so fucked? What? It pales in comparison. This could be important. Is it going to get us in touch with Moira? With Earth? Is it going to bring Andreas back? No, but when they get in touch again... Is it going we... to get us home? Mallory. We need to be focusing on getting communications up, not some... Alien conspiracy theory. You're just stressed out. Listen to me. I wasn't even supposed to be up here. I know. I turned this mission down like five times, but you... You just kept hounding me. 
for months. And I kept saying, no, no, I'm out of the game. I got this life now. And, and you just kept claiming they didn't have anyone else who could run communications here. You did install them in the first place. You could have consulted. I could have consulted with, I, I don't know, whoever else they could get. Anyone, any schmo who knows how to tie their own shoes. We've had this discussion. Oh, and we yeah, can't... myriad times because they had to stretch out the mission for months while you just kept coming at me with more and more pleas and more and more reasons to come to this godforsaken place. I mean, Bartholomew helped. I didn't do it for Bartholomew. I did it for you. Now we're trapped up here. Things are going to be all right. You don't know that. We're trapped here like animals. Do I have to show you what's out the window again? No, you do not. My kids to... are down on Earth too, you know. And watch, you think I'm not pissing my pants enough about being away from my children right now? You think I care about them less than I care about I am them. not saying that. Less I'm than I say care about the mission? Shut your mouth. It's just that there's nothing that we can do right now, so I'm clinging to what I've got. You, you're clinging to that radio like it's going to save your life. If someone actually used it, it just might. And I cling to the work that I've put every ounce of energy I have into. Because if you look out there, look out there. All those worlds out there. I think about it a lot. And they're my children, too. Not in the same way as my own little brats at home. Of course not. That would be idiotic. But there might be something out there that changes everything. And we need that right now. Sure. Sure, Jane. But this isn't like that. This radio isn't my kid. Why not? Because it's not. I think it might be. It's a radio. So what? It's a radio. It talks to you, and it needs you, and you care for it, and maybe it does something to make you feel like like you're changing the world. I'm not here to change the world. You're here because you're a member of this team, and we love you. I'm here because it's all I know how to do. <laughs> And because I was stupid enough to believe you when you said it could mean something. It does mean something. And on some level, you know this is where you belong. It's not. I hate the moon. It's supposed to be so great, so life-changing, but it's actually shit. It's empty, lonely, and nobody appreciates the work we do up here anymore. I thought I would love being up here when I was training, like I would feel like I was part of something, but every time I connect with someone on the channel, I feel like we're, we're further and further away, and I start to realize that this thing I thought was my passion has actually done more to separate me from the things I really love, the people I want to spend more time with. You get to spend time with us, Mel. And we appreciate you because we know you and the work you put in. You don't know me. You pretend you do, but you pretend we have this deep bond and that's how you actually got me to come up here, but you never once actually listened to me. And now you've cut me off from my family and I'm stuck with what? This place I hate? That's not fair. I couldn't have known. When you first showed me this program, I said, there is no way that is going to be worth the effort put in. I refuse to be part of it. But eventually I caved and blasted off up here like the doormat I am and did it anyway. And I hate it. I hate the smell of the suits. I hate the sounds of people's voices on this thing. I try to not hate Pfeiffer, and I still don't like Pfeiffer. I hate mousetrap and space food and, and the lack of earth in the sky to even look at. I hate the whole moon. You know what? You can be an entitled twat sometimes. <laughs> Dithering away someone else's life's work. I wasn't dithering. I was saying no. But you wouldn't let me, and you forced me to say yes out of some kind of, I, I don't know, obligation to you. I had to wait around for months, you know, for you to sign on. With a bag packed at my front door, waiting for the minute they said go. I said no. I'm allowed to say no. Stop your whining. You've been shitting on this mission since you got here, and I've tolerated it, but... Nay, hey, now you're taking this personally. Of course I'm taking this personally. How am I supposed to not take this personally? Do you hate me too? Oh, no, Jesus, Jane. I dreamt my whole life of coming up here. 
I went nocturnal for a while, getting my doctor, which isn't as fun as it sounds. Yeah, I bet. Shut up! How many people get to come to the moon? Very few. And you've been up here a number of times and can't even appreciate it. Right, sorry, but I've gotten pretty jaded of being on the moon by now. How can anyone get jaded of the moon? Oh, you wouldn't be pissy if things were normal. But the Earth is on fire, and we have no way no, of knowing... Mal, the Earth may be on fire, but the moon isn't. And being here pro is probably saving your life right now, because if you weren't here right now, you could be dead. What's happening? Are we back on with Moira? Jane. I'm sorry. I came in here to try to think out my fanny pack problem and ended up winding myself up. Good luck with your freaking radio! What did you do? Who says I did anything? She's been packing down stress since we got here and just finally exploded. Sure, but I bet you didn't need to light a match. Should we check on her? <sighs> no. Let her vent for a while. Being disconnected from society has got us all on edge. She'll be back sniffing daisies and chasing butterflies again soon enough. It's still doing that. I have no idea what it is. I am ready to throw in the towel. You want me to go back out, do some more aligning with the antenna? <sighs> no. Let's wait a bit more in case Andreas calls back. And don't you say anything about that. Hey, I've been doing a great job not rubbing your nose in your own mess, haven't I? Arthur May. Haven't I, given the weight of the situation? We're basically in the same situation we've been in, no better or worse off. Except that we're down a com crew member and down a jump ship. Oh, for fuck's sake. I meant in terms of being able to communicate with the satellite. Of course you did. So we won't know anything for sure until we have more information. She could come back at any time now. If she were coming back, she'd be back by now. Or she could get back on the radio. Do you want to hear what's been on the radio all day? Either this... Or this. So, Andreas and Moira and Earth and whoever aliens can all just fuck off for all I care. Ugh. What the fine how do you do to you too, Chief? There's the Holy fucker! Nuts. Commander, where on Earth are you? Well, certainly not on Earth, that's for sure. Weathers, get in here. What happened? Ran into some technical difficulties with the jump ship. Uh, Andreas, you're coming through on Moira's channel. Are you at Moira? Yeah, with the navigation down, it was a safer plan to just come to Moira than back around to you guys. Are you fucking kidding me? Are, are you all right? Is the jump ship all right? Fuck if she's all right or not. Did I fucking tell you or what? She stranded us here. Just let her talk. Oh, but no. Don't listen to Bartholme. He's just weaving conspiracy theories. Bartholme. Hi, folks. It's Chief Spindler. I'm with Commander Andreas, and she's right. Uh, the jump ship was experiencing navigational issues, and we're working on getting it fixed, so You stupid cow, Spindler! I will come over there myself and put my fist down your throat! What's going on? Andres, is it the fucking Moira getting us all killed? <laughs> what? We're not getting you all killed. I'm, I'm really sorry for the delay, but I wasn't receiving you on the radio. I had to make the decision to- What is Andreas doing at Moira? If everyone would shut up, maybe they could tell us. The decision to bypass the satellite and come here. We're working to fix the jump ship. Its trajectory after launch went dead. Oh, how convenient. It is so nice to hear your voice again, Doctor. You do flatter me. Now you're gonna come here and rescue us or what? We're working on that. We're doing everything we can over here, but we've got a lot of stuff up in the air, so we just need What's you to What's the status with Earth? We haven't heard from you in... Uh... Four days. Still no communication. As far as we can tell, there was some kind of incident on Earth. Something that wiped out their capacity to communicate with us. Right, so we're still trying to decide on how long we should wait until we send a team planet side to check things out, or whether we should remain here. How long? The foreseeable future, for now. Until we learn more. We have no idea what conditions on the surface will be like, whether a landing will even be possible. It'd definitely be unlikely that someone would be able to come back. Right, so, yeah, sorry, we've got the airway transport mission on the back burner at the moment. Have you heard from the ISS? Can you put us through to them? Doctor... It's not a hard question. Put us through to the ISS. You want to know what the ISS has been saying? They think that the Earth is dead. There are... No signals that they're picking up, no electronics, no streetlight grid, nothing. 
No matter how you put together these pieces, it's not pretty. So we are just trying to see what the big picture is. I don't believe you. Put them on. Barthol may stand the fuck down. Are we in a window with the ISS right now, Bettina? No. Another time, then. And you're going to have to not leave us in the dark for so long. I understand. You don't know how sorry I am about that. Sure. Fine. But we've got other complications. Andreas, what's the deal with the satellite? The satellite? I couldn't align the antenna and we're getting garbled transmissions. I told you I never made it to the satellite. Yeah, no shit. I had to turn off course and my navigation system went down. We're definitely getting something here. I don't understand. Where's it coming from? We have no idea yet. It could be Earth, it could be anything. Show them. Mal? Hang, hang on, what are you receiving, exactly? Uh, we're not sure, but it's coming in from the Chinese satellite. It's entirely <laughs> incomprehensible so far. So if it's not coming from you guys... It's not. Then it's gotta be coming from Earth. It can't be from Earth. What? Why not? That's impossible. Like we said, the Earth is dead. What if it's not? How can you prove this isn't coming from Earth if you haven't even heard it? It doesn't exist. Trust me. Something sure does. I know you want to hold out hope, but you are listening to ghosts. There are no signals from down there. Uh, Reese, can you patch us through right now to hear what you're getting? Uh, sure. Let me... There. Do you copy that, Spindler? Spindler? Andreas? Moira, come in. Oh, God damn it! we lost them! Did I tell you? Did I fucking tell you? Barthel May, you can't prove anything. She played you like a fucking fiddle, and now we're as good as dead. They'll send another jump ship. You believe that? You still trust the bitch as far as you can throw her? Hey, you can throw someone pretty far on the moon. So yeah, until we know more. She couldn't have predicted that she'd have trouble with the ship, Richard. She couldn't, really. You don't find that at all convenient. They're working on it. You heard Spindler. That's not Spindler, Mal, and you know it. That's not how she acts. They're in crisis mode. They're play acting. You cannot accuse them of that. They're working on the huge problem of the Earth being out of communication. We don't know what the hell they're doing. Reese, can you get them back on the channel? Yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying. We don't even know for a fact that the Earth is out of communication. They said that the ISS- They is haven't more... told us fucking anything you could shake a stick at since this started. Now, why the hell is that? Listen, Dick. You've got to calm down. They don't know much more than we do. If they don't know anything more than we do, then why haven't they heard this transmission? Well... Um... Yeah, yeah, answer me that one. Why are they so certain that it's nothing when they haven't even heard it? This is ridiculous. Tell me you believe it. I empirically believe everything Moira has told us. Why would they lie? They're not lying. Just because you don't like the commander doesn't mean... We've got a transmission that says they're lying about at least one thing. Now start connecting the dots. What else are they lying about? You're starting to sound like a conspiracy theorist. Think about it! Things here were running like clockwork before Andreas and Pfeiffer transferred in. And yet all the systems started breaking when we're supposed to have the finest engineer on the planet. Now see here. Gordon has been working really hard. Then why is the data transfer not working, huh? Because we've never worked on something like this, and there are variables we've never thought of, and we're stressed, and uh, I don't know, because we're in the middle of a crisis? You still believe that? Why hasn't he been able to fix one single thing in this station? You know what you're saying? You're saying someone's been sabotaging the systems? No one's been sabotaging the systems. I can tell you that. I have been working on- You said you fixed the cable on the jump ship. Was that true? You're stroking me? Of course that's true. You claim you fixed it, then what happened to Andreas and the jump ship? She said it was their nav systems. That has nothing to do with- You're still taking Andreas and Pfeiffer at their word! Barthelme, go to quarters, or I'll put you there myself. Oh, fuck you, you fucking asshole. You can't order me around. Oh, I can absolutely order you around. You're barely even part of this team. So you've all kept reminding me since I got here. Rin will bear it because I have a job to do, and I do it. You know what? You are getting out of hand. Pfeiffer, I've got this. Do you, though? Because I've had enough of his lip. Gordon! And with Andreas gone, the chain of command goes to me. 
<laughs> now, <laughs> we need to think levelly. <gasps> so make like a tree. Get out of here. Oh, that is not how it works, Lieutenant. <laughs> yeah, it does. I outrank you. So listen to me. You're going. I have to decades listen. more experience than you in off world procedures. That doesn't matter. Oh. What matters is I'm taking lead on this mission because that's how the rules go, and this rabble rousing is going to stop right now. What were you doing to the radio behind my back? The radio? Excuse you. The other day, I come into comms to find you taking apart the radio for no good reason. I had plenty of good reason. I was trying to get a better output. That is some shady-ass bullshit right there. You, you see what I mean, Mal? Dick, shut up. Pfeiffer, how do I know what you did to the radio isn't causing this feedback, this whatever it is? Primony, everything here is new ground from a technical point of view. I knew there was something about you from day one, I knew. No, 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 no. The number of variables... Where is the involved. antenna pointed right now? What? You did align it, didn't you? Of course I aligned it. You can hear the proof That is that all gibberish. We don't know what we can hear. What the hell are you saying, Reese? You think I'm in on some kind of government conspiracy all of a sudden? You can't take what Barthelmay is saying seriously. She's got a point, though, Pfeiffer. Leave Gordon alone. He works harder than all of us combined. Jane, can you kindly stay out of this? I'm part of this, too, you know. And whatever is going on, none of this arguing is going to get us anywhere. You don't know the particulars, and we've got enough we've problems. We've just talked with them. We'll talk with them again. Mark my words. We won't be hearing from them again. Not with everything that keeps going down. I haven't touched a single system in all of Arroway that's broken on our end. While Pfeiffer... I've had enough of this. What, what aren't you telling us? You think if I were in on some conspiracy, I'd still be here? Do you? Ah! Fucking touch oh. me! Huh? You fucking malign me. Do you want to take this outside? Oh, you think you're being funny. Oh, it'll be something for you to do since you obviously haven't been doing your damn job. Screw you. I've been working my ass off. Oh, prove it. I do not have to be maligned by some privileged asshole. Come here. <laughs> ah, son of a... Get him. <laughs> Hit him in the head. <laughs> Stop it. Pardon? <laughs> Shut up. No! Ah, Mel! Ah! Oh my god! Oh, holy oh. shit, what did you do? Oh. Oh, I, did. I didn't mean. Get off of her! Get out of the way! I've got to apply pressure to that wound. Well, let me get a med kit. Get it here! Oh. Is, she, is she bleeding? What's going on? I'm sorry. Mal, can, can you move? I don't think so. All right, <gasps> don't move. Let me see. Gordon, would you radio Moira already? Right. Right, 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 right. Come in, Moira. This is Lieutenant Pfeiffer. We've got a medical emergency here. Please copy. It's okay. I've got you, Mal. Spindler, damn it if you can hear us. Chief Reese is in need of medical attention. Is this what you were talking about, Dick? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. Andreas! Spindler! Come on, damn it, respond. Join us next week for Chapter 5 of the Fine-Tuned Universe. Thank you for joining us for this virtual event. While the shadow of the ongoing COVID-19 crisis darkens our stage for the time being, Ladder Theatre is over the moon to be able to bring a small piece of that stage to you, and we look forward to seeing you in person again soon. If you enjoyed this performance, please consider supporting local artists with a tax-deductible donation 
at flatearttheater.com slash contribute, or click the button in Facebook Live. Flat Earth Theater is a federally recognized nonprofit 501c3 corporation. Fine Tuned Universe was written by A. Lerman for Flat Earth Theater and directed by Jake Skeltrito. The cast featured Juliet Bowler as Chief Mallory Reese, Kristen Heider as Dr. Jane Weathers, Chris Champa as Lieutenant Gordon Pfeiffer, James Hayward as Dr. Richard Dick Barthelme, Melissa De Jesus as Commander Marina Andreas, and Liz Salazar as Chief Bettina Spindler. Sound effects were designed by James Rossi, with technical direction by Lee Downs. For more information about Flat Earth Theatre, visit flatearttheatre.com, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram. That's all, folks. Tune in next week, same moon time, same moon channel. This is the end of your broadcast day. Arroway Station, signing off.